Hi. So, to address the elephant in the room. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, do you really need to read sheet music? No, oh. like Paul McCartney couldn't, and he did okay. Oh yeah, thanks, yeah, sure. Um, no problem, Paul. <laughs> but the thing is, it's not actually as hard as it looks, because usually it doesn't actually look like this. It looks more like this. And if it does look like that, well, there are always other songs. Plus, even just understanding how to read this will really help you communicate music with non-guitarists, it'll help you make sense of music theory, and most importantly, It'll make you better than Paul McCartney. And the best part, it'll only take a few minutes. So, you in? Oh yeah, for sure. What? Oh yeah, sure, I'm in, you know. Can I come? Um, sure, Paul. <laughs> oh yeah. Why not tap? So, what's cool about sheet music for guitar is it's, uh, super complicated. Oh. Yeah. So, about 600 years ago, some German dudes were jamming on their lutes and were like, This is hard. We should make, like, sheet music. Just was a lute. Huh, <laughs> yeah, brother. And then they made lute tablature which is the basis for guitar tablature. And guitar tab is a lot easier to read, but it also misses a lot of the detail that standard notation covers, which is why it's good to know both. Staff notation. So standard notation is also called staff notation because it's notated on a staff. Wow, this is a staff. It's a blank canvas for musicians to write on. And those are bar lines. And between them are bars or measures. Every single one represents the same amount of time, and they're used to help make the song easier to read. You know how phone numbers are broken up into sections so they're easier to look at? Like 867-5309? Oh yeah, I, I love that song. Okay. Bars sort of have the same effect. Rhythm. So rhythm is the heart of music. It's what makes you move. Um, so there are four main note values that you should be familiar with. In American, it's a whole note, a half note, a quarter note, and an eighth note. So next would be a 16th note, and you can go all the way up to a 256th note. It's pretty intuitive. Or in Britain, you have a semi-brief, a minimum, a crotchet, and a quaver. So then a 16th note is called a semi-quaver, which of course makes this one a demi-semi-hemi-demi-semi-quaver. Right, Paul? Um, you know, yeah. Also, if you see a dot beside a note, it increases the note's length by half of its original value. So for example, this half note with a dot becomes three beats. And then, to tell you how many notes go into a bar, you have what's called a time signature. That's these two numbers at the start of the staff. The bottom one is basically a numeric representation of the note values. So a two is a half note, a four is a quarter note, and an eight is an eighth note. And it can go all the way up to 256, but usually it won't. And then the top number tells you how many of those note values you can fit in a bar. So two four means you can fit two quarter notes, three four means you can fit three, four four means you can fit four. And four four is also called common time, because it's the most common time, which is great because it's also the most straightforward. A whole note lasts a whole bar, a half note, half a bar, a quarter, a quarter. Whereas with three, four time, a quarter note lasts one third of a bar. So it's a third note? No, it's a quarter note that lasts a third. That's why we call it a crotchet. I mean, dummy, semi, I dummy, crotchet. Guys, guys, shh. Let's take a rest. <laughs> I'll explain. Every note value has a matching rest value. They work the same way as notes, but instead of playing, you don't. That said, if a note comes up before a rest, you don't let it linger through, you have to mute it. Melody. So if rhythm makes you move, melody makes you think and feel. That's a treble clef. It's also called a G clef. Do you know why? Like, like you know a G for guitar. No, it's because it looks like a G. Don't you see it? Yeah, no, not quite. Uh but it's also because the swirliest part is around the second line, which represents the note G. Um, wh what? Every line and every space on the staff represent a note. And in English, each note is represented by one of the first seven letters of the alphabet. So which note is represented by which line or space on the staff is dependent on the clef. And because the guitar uses a G clef, remember, we know that the G is here, on the second line. From there, we can logically figure out what each space and line represents by going through the alphabet. Alright, yeah, that's a H. No, no. Because the musical alphabet consists of only seven letters, once you get to the G, you go back to the A. So going up from G, you got A, B, C, D, E, F. And working backwards from G, you got F and E. That makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. So what note is that? Uh, H, I believe. No. But it is hard to tell, because it's hard to remember nine positions. So what helps is to remember the lines and the spaces separately. The lines give you E, G, B, D, F. Every good boy deserves fudge. Fudge? No, Paul. Good boys deserve fudge. Oh. Here you go, Paul. Yes. Look at your face. Face. Those are the notes in the spaces, you know? Ledger lines. So you might notice that guitarists can actually play more than nine notes, which means that the staff actually only spans from this E 
to this F. Uh-oh. That's why we have ledger lines. Oh, yes, of course. Ledger lines are temporary lines you can use to indicate how far above or below the staff a note is. So one below gives you a C, two, an A, three, an F, and the space below that is the low E. And it works the same way above the staff, just the other way. But with all these lines, now we have four E's. They are all the same note, but they're also different pitches. You can't use them interchangeably because that would sound like this. And on the note of pitches, you know, even though guitar uses the treble clef, it's actually played an octave lower. That won't matter for now, but it is worth knowing. Sharps and flats. Now, you might remember from my fretboard video, in music, you have sharps and flats. On a piano, those are the black keys, or they're just the notes that fall between all the natural notes, except for E and F and B and C. Say it with me. Because, because everything's fudge. That's right, Paul. Um, there are two ways that sharps and flats are represented in standard notation. Either you stick a sharp beside the clef, and everything on the line or space that the sharp is on is played as a sharp. You can also do that with flats. And then those sharps or flats are what's called the key signature, because making a note sharp or flat for an entire song changes the key. But that's for another time. But if you don't want to change the whole key of the song, but you still want a sharp or a flat, you just stick it beside the note that you want to be a sharp or a flat. And that's called an accidental. And now, a lightning round of other symbols and terms. A tempo heading tells you how quickly to play in Italian. It's also sometimes in the composer's native language. Dynamic markings tell you how loud to play, also in Italian. Basically, just grab one of these and you'll, you'll be all right. <laughs> Practice. So by now, with enough time, you should be able to work your way through any piece of music. So let's do it. So notice beside the treble clef, there's a sharp on the F, which means everything on the space of the F will be a sharp. Um, yeah? There's nothing on that line. Whatever. So remember, every good, every boy, deserves good fudge. boy deserves fudge, you know. And face. So, you ready? G, G, D, D, E, 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 D, C, C, B, B, A, A, G. Yeah, and that's it. So basically, now that you have your new skill, the best way to practice it and really hone it is to basically do what we just did. Work through easy songs and, you know, just go at a slow pace, sound it out, and go back over it till it feels more natural. And for rhythm, don't worry about the placement of the notes at first. Just set a metronome to around 60 BPM, or larghetto, and clap along to it. And before you know it, it'll be second nature. Yippee, you know.